all heartbroken here in Buffalo. There are tears all over the... No, the, the Mafia can't cry. If the Mafia breaks, what chance do I have? All of Bill's Mafia is now in witness protection. They were the only losers this weekend who couldn't hang their hat on the fact that they exceeded expectations. Packers, Buccaneers, Texans, nobody expected them to be there. I'll be uh, referencing drop passes this week. And in the greatest form of irony, I won't be mentioning the Chiefs receivers or Nelson Aguilar, which makes me believe we have no idea who's gonna go to the Super Bowl. Welcome to the real winners and losers of the NFL divisional round. I'll reveal those right after the Blop 10. A top 10 list so hot, they won't even feature it on Pornhub. Blop 10, this is just an excessive handshake. If you gotta do SAT prep to learn the handshake, it's too much. Do you know how I know that the S2 QB cognition test CJ Stroud flunked last year is BS? It's because he can remember this fucking handshake. Blop 9. Now, Jim Harbaugh attended an anti-abortion rally in between head coaching interviews last week. It's a great day for a march. It's a great day, this is football weather! And in a similar move, brother John Harbaugh made sure no women were turned on, ensuring there'd be no chance for unwanted pregnancy via this dance. Prop eight, this is not a hand job. But if you just look at his face, it might be. It's a great day, this is football weather! Bluff seven, anyone who calls this a flop has no idea how strong Trent Williams is. Number six, this Ravens guy's costume. All that money for a ticket and you don't even have eye holes in that mask? Even still, he probably saw the field better than CJ Stroud in that game. Will he be able to see Chris Jones giving him the Eli Manning double bird next week? Block five. Chandler Jones went on a podcast and stated he doesn't believe in CTE. CTE is not real. I don't believe it's real. And then he said... <laughs> He doesn't know what the C or the E stands for. I don't know the other two words, the other two words in the acronym CTE, but I know the T stands for trauma. Cause we didn't uh, hear about it back in the day. No shit, because concussion research findings were being hidden. Did you learn nothing from Will Smith? Repetitive head trauma chokes the brain. <laughs> oh. You can no longer have opinions about facts, okay? I don't believe in herpes. I have no idea what these open sores on my genitals are, but since I don't believe in herpes, they're not that. It's not real. No. CT is not real. Your brain gets smart, but your head gets dumb. I don't believe in diabetes. I just almost die every time I have too much sugar. Number four, Chris Collinsworth likes to see big men go down on QBs. And now you've got your 330 pound all-star going down on a quarterback. Hey, when you already have a big guy going down on your quarterback, you don't have to beat Gob. 30 pound all-star going down on a quarterback. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on, go play. Number three, from going down to not going down, Dre Greenlaw picked off Jordan Love to seal the game and refused to go down. I know somewhere, fans of the 2006 Chargers were screaming at him to hit the turf. If I were the league office, I might look into this uh, because trying to run this ball back for a touchdown is all the proof I need that Greenlaw had the Niners minus 10 and a half. Blop two, Jason Kelsey shows us those boobies. <laughs> Don't forget, that's a Sexiest Man Alive finalist and a GD national treasure. In Blop 1, Bills fans were throwing snowballs at Patrick Mahomes after the game. Should you throw snowballs at opposing players? Probably not, Deshaun Watson excluded. But for someone like Patty Mahomes, this is like running out of the trenches and into no man's land in World War One. except Bills Mafia is more insane and more pissed off than any army that has ever gone to battle. I commend his bravery from Patrick Mahomes here. Yeah, there's no weakness there. It's gonna take our best effort. Hold up, let's check the That's Good Sports archives. Five years ago, this happened. Yes, we have visual evidence of the Kansas City Chiefs fans throwing snowballs onto the field during the divisional round of the 2019 NFL playoffs. Now, I know it's been a long time since you've seen your team win a home playoff game, Kansas City, 
but this is no way to act in the first half when your team is winning. Those actions are only acceptable when you are fourth quarter drunk, not first half drunk. So careful what you say on Twitter, Chiefs fans. And block zero, Tony Romo admitting he's crazy. There are 70,000 plus who are screaming against him. Well, that's how many fans I play in front of normally at my house. Pretend like they're all there, but there's zero. Blop zero. Are you tired of your sports team giving you nightmares? May I suggest a bear mattress? The only nightmare proof mattress on the market? I'm kidding, of course, but Bear is sponsoring today's show, and I've had my Bear mattress since last summer, and I am sleeping better than ever despite the torment my team has put me through this year. If you're looking to upgrade your sleep, go to bearmattress.com slash that's good to get 35% off a of Bear mattress for a limited time. A mattress is a big purchase, so use my big discount to save yourself the most money. And knowing Bear has a lifetime warranty, there's very little risk for you. Now, I wouldn't be promoting a mattress that I didn't love and use, and Bear offers you a 120 night sleep trial to make sure you love it. It's shipped to your door, and all Bear mattresses are fiberglass free and Green Guard certified, meaning you can rest assured uh, knowing you're sleeping atop comfortable and safe materials. Bear has a sleep quiz on their website. Answer a few questions to help determine the style of mattress that is best for you. I'm a side sleeper who has had lower back issues. Bear helped me navigate to their elite hybrid mattress. My favorite thing though is that Bear is made with sleep recovery technology. That means the mattresses are made with three different foams designed to pull heat away from your body so you sleep cooler. My wife likes to keep like a thousand blankets on our bed and I sleep very hot. So this mattress has really helped me sleep all night at a more comfortable temperature. Take advantage of Bear's current winter sale running for a limited time with my link, bearmattress.com slash that's good to get 35% off. Go now and when you close your eyes and fall asleep, dream of me. Dream of this face. All right, let's kick off with winners. The Lions and all of Detroit, baby. The real America's team. The Lions are advancing to the championship game for the first time since 1992, where they lost to the Washington Redskin Potatoes. Had they won that game, they would have played the Bills in the Super Bowl. So yeah, we've been robbed of our dream Super Bowl twice now. The Lions defense made a statement early as Melon Fonwu brought the sexy, sexy corner blitz. Baker never saw him coming. And on third and long, Mike Evans, sorry, I mean Russell Gage let another ball fly through his hands and CJ Gardner Johnson gets the pick. And if you think that interception was easy, there were no easy interceptions this weekend. Losers, defensive players catching like the Chiefs receivers was a record set for most dropped interceptions in one weekend. Savage dropped one, Nixon dropped one, Jalen Petrie drop, drop, drop. Now last week, Detroit got it done as a cohesive unit. Same thing. No one player stood out as a statistical anomaly, but also unlike say, Stephon Diggs, not to single anyone out. Everyone produced. Jameer Gibbs was awesome and he scored. Also broke Antoine Winfield's ankles. Aman Ra, 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 Ra. St. Brown, the sun god, moon god, and god of whatever the fuck Pluto is now, got the tough yards. And Sam Laporta, god of outdoor bathrooms, had nine receptions. The only 100 yard performer in this game was Mike Evans, and there were only three all weekend, and one was Lamar Jackson rushing. Winning big balls coach, Dan Campbell. The Lions win would not be complete without Dan Campbell dropping all three of his testicles on the table and going for it on fourth down. Two, all right, that's two. They dial up a play for running back Craig Reynolds who easily runs it in on fourth and goal. That TD was huge in a scoreless third quarter where 
defense was dominating. Pretty cool also to see Craig Reynolds who fought his one ass cheek and three toes off for a roster spot last year on Hard Knocks to get a touchdown in the postseason. Just his second all year. Now Baker Mayfield answered with an insane sideline throw, hits a wide open Cade Otten. Baker and Goff went toe to toe like the blue collar Mahomes versus Allen matchup. And Baker had 349 passing yards, three touchdowns. He was the only 3D passer this weekend, the only 300 yard thrower. Unfortunately, the two picks were indeed costly. Two, all right, that's two. Loser, Brian Branch. Why the fuck is your mouthpiece in the back of your helmet? Fix it. Just don't, what are you? That drives me nuts, man. It's not real. CT is not real. Losing opportunities, the Packers. The Packers straight up outplayed the 49ers for three and a half quarters. And according to uh, Packers Wire, they had 15 missed opportunities. Now I've narrowed it down to the big ones. The biggest play that will haunt them is truly savage. Darnell Savage. Early in the game, Savage dropped what could have been a possible pick six. Keyshawn Nixon dropped another one. Their first drive ended in a field goal, and they were dominating that drive. And of course, Anders Carlson missing the field goal. My winning play goes to 49ers corner Charvarius Ward. Jordan Love fired a dart into the end zone to Romeo Dobbs, who was a beast in this game. But Ward executes a perfect pass breakup to end that opening dominant Packers drive. That's as clutch a pass breakup as you will see held them to three. Winners of my coffee? Yeah, the refs from this game as a crew. You have earned the fuck the refs blend of coffee, benchwarmerbrew.com. Now to be clear to 49ers fans, I'm not saying the refs handed you the win, okay? Packers beat themselves, but the refs gave the Packers a terrible spot, resulting in fourth and inches, and then another terrible spot that Matt LaFleur had to waste a challenge on, and then missed the obvious fact that the 49ers were in the neutral zone, something I watched my Broncos get flagged for against the Lions on the goal line. The refs seem to have spotting issues all all night. I thought I was watching a woman with an irregular period. They missed this face mask on Aaron Jones. Probably could have called this intentional grounding. So, F the refs, available at benchwarmerbrew.com. Packers fans, use code 50OFF on your first subscription and you'll get 50% off of that. It's a hell of a deal for a delicious, bold coffee. Winning effort, this infinity block between Jawan Jennings and Corey Ballantyne. I wish the same effort was given by the Packers defense on the 49ers first two TDs. Both big plays, a 32 yard touchdown to Kittle and a 39 yard TD ripped by Christian McCaffrey. Love's best throw was this sideline dot to Romeo Dobbs. Jordan Love caught up to Brock Purdy in the bad throw department eventually, meaning luck was not on Love's side. Love is not all you need, you also need luck. So yeah, I'm saying the Packers should bring in Andrew Luck in some capacity with the team. Aaron Jones nearly won my Kirk Cousins award for becoming the first 100 yard rusher against the 49ers in like 51 games. Losing reference, me. We had a punt return touchdown in the Ravens game and we nearly watched Keyshawn Nixon take it to the house against the 49ers. Nixon hasn't been this big of a threat to San Francisco since Richard Nixon used his war on drugs to attack the hippies. <laughs> Reaching or is that really good? I don't know anymore. And like the Nixon that came before him, Keyshawn fumbled this one at the end. Loser, the rain. An underrated aspect of this game was the effect the weather had early, which Purdy started the game gloved up before finally finding his grip in the second half when he needed it. And yes, I have to say it, he'll need that grip next week to beat Goff. Winning stat, Kyle Shanahan got his first win while entering the fourth quarter trailing the opposition. The 49ers are not a team that's used to coming from behind. They like winning games the old fashioned way missionary style. After Carlson missed the field goal, Brock Purdy moved the ball down the field, withstood an uncharacteristic drop from George Kittle, finally getting them down close enough for a Christian McCaffrey touchdown as he sliced his way into the end zone. That turned out to be the game winning TD. And with that victory, Kyle Shanahan broke his streak of losing 30 straight games while trailing in the fourth quarter. Maybe he's been reading the Kama Sutra as much as his own playbook. Because you know what's better than 0 and 30? 1 and 30. 
AKA Lotus position. Loser, the ghost of Brett Favre. All year we've been comparing Jordan Love to Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre and they have been for their positive QB traits. Unfortunately, the most similar throw, the most eerie comparison came with the game on the line as Love channeled Favre yet again, this time for an identical rolling right across the body pick to cost his team a playoff win. Love will learn from this, okay? Favre never could, but Love will. But Love wasn't the only one haunted with the game on the line. Losing similarities? After Baker Mayfield led an impressive drive to give the Bucks a chance at the end of their game, he sealed their fate with a bad pick over the middle. Josh Allen had an open Khalil Shakir, but runs into his lineman and can't get enough on the ball to get it there. All three of those QBs had their kickers miss key field goals in those games, and all three QBs had a chance to give us an insane ending, and not one was able to deliver. Winning QB Lamar Jackson took over the game in the second half in ways we just haven't seen this postseason. The presumptive NFL MVP threw a touchdown in the first half to Nelson Aguilar. That's right, but he went to the locker room and returned hell-bent, ending the Houston Texans. Lamar hit on 16 of his 22 passes for 152 yards and a pair of touchdowns. He added 100 yards with his legs. Third time he's done that in the postseason and two more touchdowns as the Ravens went on a 24-0 run in the second half to put that game out of reach. The Baltimore Ravens, for the first time in franchise history, are hosting an AFC Championship game on their home turf. They've gone to and won two Super Bowls, but they had advanced in Oakland and Foxborough to get there in 2000 and in 2012. The fly in the ointment for Lamar Jackson has always been there, always a part of the story. He's not a quarterback. He should work out as a wide receiver. He can't throw. He can't win a playoff game. He can't go three and a half hours without needing to take a shit. He can't get past the divisional round. Now it's going to be, can he get to the Super Bowl? Well, if the Ravens produce over 200 rushing yards again with secret weapon Dalvin Cook, who had the longest run of his season, then I believe so. Winning defense? I mean, winning defense? Daddy? They are the Texans and they are the Cowboys, but you know, I got this hat on, so I'm daddy. Watching the Ravens defense hold the Texans offense to just three points a week after they torched the Browns is giving off championship vibes. If you exclude the game he got the concussion in, CJ Stroud hasn't had a passer rating below 102 since November 19th. You have to go all the way back to October to find a game where he had less than 200 passing yards. Oddly, Baltimore, while getting 27 pressures and making Stroud look human, sacked him zero times in this game, no picks, no sacks, and they look like the best defense in the entire postseason. They were assisted, of course, by the rowdy Ravens crowd. And our fans are gonna get a chance to cheer just as louder, louder than they did in this game, and they were amazing. Six false start penalties. I thought our fans were incredible, man. It was deafening out there. Losing QB, honestly, it was probably Brock Purdy. I've never seen a quarterback lose so much support while also winning a playoff game but ultimately this has to go to CJ Stroud who had an unfortunate end to what's been an incredible first season in the NFL. One where he'll almost certainly earn himself Offensive Rookie of the Year honors. Stroud started his season with the loss in Baltimore and it ended in the same place. He had just 175 yards, 57% completions, no touchdowns, but also no picks. And I don't want to put everything on his shoulders because the Texans run game gave him no support, like Sean McDermott on a counter-terrorism committee. Houston's running backs carried the ball just 11 times for 29 yards. They were one of the least efficient running teams in 2023 and it ultimately spelled their doom. They really couldn't do anything on offense in general and their one touchdown of the game came on Steven Sims' punt return. The Stroud boys were finally detained in Baltimore, but all they need to do is stand back and stand by for 2024, which is starting to feel like their year, isn't it? Losing decision, the Bills, who trailed late in the fourth. Now, I'm not one to question Sean McDermott's decision-making because no matter how outlandish his tactics, 
uh, like firing Ken Dorsey or invoking the spirit of 9-11, it's led to better results this season for the Bills. But I have to think running a fake punt with DeMar Hamlin was not the best call for that situation in the fourth quarter. First of all, you had to have learned from the 2019 Houston Texans that you do not run fake punts against the Chiefs in the fucking playoffs no matter what. That's like trying to attack a vampire at night. But if you're going to do it, maybe snap the ball to a guy who wasn't legally dead at any point in his playing career. Hell, if you want to go for it, maybe just keep the ball in Josh Allen's hands and bet on your all-pro QB to make a play. I feel like McDermott was watching Joe Flacco ball out at the end of the year and thought, I really need to lock up comeback player of the year for my guy, DeMar Hamlin. No, you did not, Sean. He literally rose from the dead to play in the NFL again. They're going to name that award after him, fake pun or not. The Chiefs only had 10 guys on the field, sure, and nine of them were at the line of scrimmage, and they still sniffed out the play and stuffed Hamlin. McDermott got unbelievably lucky that Andy Reid tried to get just as cute as he did around the goal line. Let's see, should we dial up a play where my Hall of Fame quarterback throws it to my Hall of Fame tight end for their third touchdown in the game? Or maybe just hand off to the impossible to tackle Isaiah Pacheco, who had 97 rushing yards and a touchdown already. No way. Let's put the ball in the hands of the guy who's already fumbled it once today, Miko Hardman. And after further review, he did just lose the ball before he went down and fumbled it through the end zone, and that kept the Bills alive for just a little longer. Losing trauma, if the NFL really was scripted, the ending of this Bills game would have been thrown out because it was two on the nose, derivative. Nearly 33 years to the day that Scott Norwood missed the last second field goal in Super Bowl 25, wide right, Tyler slap on the base man had a chance to tie it up against Kansas City and missed hard to the right. No, no! no he doesn't make it! Bills fans that were around for Norwood's miss had a truckload of salt poured into their reopened wounds and their sons and daughters got to feel a fraction of that heartbreak. And just like the Bills did in the Super Bowl when they left the game on the foot of Scott Norwood in the divisional round against the Chiefs, they never should have settled for a long field goal in the swirling winds of Buffalo. This was among the most heartbreaking losses in Bills history, which is a very, very high bar to clear. The path was set. They were red hot. They finally got a chance to play the Chiefs at home with the fans in the stands. At the end of the day, they really don't have anyone to blame but themselves. Josh Allen gets my Kirk Cousins award this week because no matter what he did, his teammates let him down. Trent Sherfield had a couple of deep balls he should have reeled in. Stephon Diggs, who posted that picture three years ago of him watching the Chiefs celebrate an AFC title, had another deep pass, an 80 yard beautiful pass from Josh Allen go through his hands. That's probably Diggs' worst career drop. Allen had 186 passing yards and it felt like he could have had 300 if he got some more help. They had luck on their side too. That's what stings. Even this Josh Allen fumble didn't hurt him. Diggs and Cook both fumbled on the first series with no consequence. Winning gotcha, MVS who had not one but two huge catches in this game, a 30 and a 32 yarder with one being heavily contested, just a great grab in a game where MVS was needed to make plays, and he did. Pretend like they're all there, but there's zero. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports, winners and losers. Come back tomorrow for the power rankings heading into the championship round. And uh, I'm on Twitter, at Brandon Perna. 